Um, as you know, in uh, uh, a couple of months ago at Esri User Conference, uh, SBS announced uh, uh, AUD for communication. Uh, that's an extension or uh, configuration of uh, AUD uh, that uh, uh, currently uh, is available. And I'm quite excited to kind of talk about what's going on, uh, present you some new development tools uh, that we have done to uh, enable uh, AUD um, uh, to work with the communication domain. Um, I just want to first thank you for uh, to Brian and uh, Paul and uh, Autodesk folks. They kind of made my life uh, it, a bit easier because uh, they kind of uh, covered uh, to a great extent uh, certain concepts like design container and uh, uh, digital twins. So I will be using those uh, uh, kind of term that terminology extensively in my demo and. Uh, presentation. So um, I think you're comfortable by now to understand what design container is, digital twin, and so we can, uh, with this in mind, let's dive in. Um, first, I want to state that uh, uh, communication configuration uh, has always been part of AUD product. So it's not necessarily brand new, it's always been there, and uh, um, I, I think some of uh, utilities already leveraged it and used in uh, um, uh, in their design. And I've grabbed, captured uh, a few pictures uh, that in my neighborhood um, that you can recognize that electric uh, uh, overhead with uh, underbuilt of uh, uh, communication cables with a nice big loop. So uh, way too big to my taste, but that's what it is, right? And there's a work in progress. It's uh, uh, fiber uh, underground being built. And uh, you can see your uh, uh, overhead with the risers and um, splice, uh, splice container and uh, hub terminator with uh, all the equipment. It's still uh, being constructed. But uh, uh, the reason I want to show you those diagrams is that it, um, if you think about what AUD is capable of, you can uh, in, quickly realize that, oh, I can probably model uh, all that kind of cables, uh, uh, risers, uh, and closures in AUD, and I can start using it. And that's totally correct. That's what we had in AUD. The challenges uh, there in um, uh, details, right? So uh, we, if we start looking at uh, internally on uh, inside plan and the and an enclosure, for example, uh, there are a number of shelves. Typically, what you see in, this, in the office, may, it's a major uh, uh, communication box with a number of shelves. Then uh, each uh, shelf may contain a chassis with um, uh, devices uh, and devices uh, subdivided on uh, kind of slots and then each can have a cassette in, um, in internally. And then uh, each uh, uh, of those devices may have multiple ports, right? So those ports um, really um, uh, will, will they have a different connectors, uh, a duplex, a LC, SC of different type, and all that is connected with the different uh, fibers, patch cords, and so it creates kind of a mess internally. But that's what uh, communication domain, in, in, in a, that's what we have to deal with. That's what we um, designers, when they uh, uh, create um, communication design they have to deal with and uh, complete uh, all the level of details. That was not available and uh, for, to take it um, in, into uh, product, we have developed certain approach and uh, we decided at that time, uh, let's uh, address some of the limitations available in current AUD configuration for communications. Um, and we'll uh, leverage everything what we have built as part of intelligent design solution. And when we reference intelligent design solution, it's just not AUD. It's AUD connected to the enterprise, right? So we need it in order to, uh, to be able to complete design workflow. Uh, we also have heard uh, feedback from end users that uh, because of complexity of current 
uh, networks and what's in the field, it is really hard to um, kind of continue uh, using as uh, my daddy used to do, of, uh, different uh, construction sheets and uh, multiple splicing diagrams. They become uh, too complex to handle. So th from, with this in mind, we thought of introducing um, uh, digital twins as a way to kind of represent and simplify that complexity to pro provide visual um, uh, impression of what's going to be constructed and in the field actually see what is um, uh, how to connect not necessarily use diagrams but use digital twins um, uh, we also want to leverage all the capabilities available in uh, uh, Autodesk Forge, uh, Beam Technologies, Mobile, and Augmented Mixed Reality. So we set that stage, set that goal for us, and uh, look at how we can accomplish it. So first of all, uh, we realize very quickly in the process that we need enhancements, um, not only to AUDCOM configuration, but also to the core product. And uh, we worked with uh, our product team, and uh, there are a number of uh, enhancements uh, planned, uh, and Dave actually mentioned this in um, his presentation that uh, would allow us to, to do that uh, steps of uh, completing uh, connectivity at the level of connecting node to node, so connect uh, connector to a port, so something that is very uh, kind of new and uh, very important for communication in order to create that end-to-end -to -end connectivity. And we also realize that we probably will be reinventing the wheel, the wheel if we attempt to do everything in AUD. We, as I said, we, we were interested in building a solution that, as part of intelligent design, um, uh, intelligent design solution, and uh, uh, we had uh, great integration uh, points with the Azure Utility Network. And Azure Utility Network, uh, Azure released a new model for that supports communication. Very powerful, very rich in capabilities, and um, uh, uh, great performance. Uh, and it allows us to uh, manage and allows AUD to kind of um, uh, manage uh, uh, design data and communicate back and uh, uh, seamlessly with utility network. So, and it also had certain capabilities that we may leverage like diagramming tool. So in our approach, we uh, actually uh, build a solution that not only uses uh, AUD, but also services uh, provided by Esri um, uh, feature services to uh, build some diagrams and uh, do some tracing, and also uh, uh, Forge, uh, Autodesk Forge, to create uh, some uh, digital twins. Um, there's also a question why. Why we are talking at this PAG about this communication? Uh, so, a number of reasons. Number one, communication is uh, uh, typically part of uh, uh, utility uh, operations. So, most of utilities, electric utilities, have a, a fiber uh, that supports internal operations, uh, SCADA, uh, control houses, and all the security cameras. So, we know utilities are, uh, have uh, teams that uh, maintain uh, fiber or communication networks within utility. So the opportunity is here uh, to present you how you can use AUD, talk to your colleagues or uh, team members and say, you know what, we already use AUD for uh, overhead distribution and underground uh, electric and why don't we uh, share with you our tools and you can configure and uh, start managing uh, networks, fiber networks with that tool. And uh, number two, um, through this presentation, uh, we'll show you kind of number of new tools that uh, we added to a product and we added to configuration. And we believe, um, and that's why I'm really excited to show all these tools, they are very relevant and um, can be utilized in other workflows, in other domains, not just for communication. Connectivity, if you think about this, is kind of complex topic and uh, if it would be uh, the same uh, and conceptually, if you want to manage complex connectivity in uh, communication domain or electric, of course, there is a different rules, but uh, challenges of how to connect 
one end to another end and do it very efficiently, quickly, uh, without breaking standards, that's the same challenge. Um, so uh, if you see throughout the presentation uh, things that uh, you believe are relevant and you may uh, help you with your existing other workflows, talk to us and SBS team and we will be happy to see how we can actually adopt those tools to other domains. Uh, set the stage, uh, I mentioned we use uh, configure it, uh, AUD and we leverage uh, uh, ASRI uh, uh, utility network. In essence, we uh, think about, you can think about AUD as a geo-enabled uh, uh, design tool uh, that uh, allows us to manage uh, uh, all the assets on the fiber, uh, uh, fiber communication network, coax network at, at a very granular level, level of port and the fiber. And we update utility network uh, with, uh, of course, all the changes to topology connectivity. But this time we actually take it to the next level. We're not only exchanging data, we're allowing in AUD to leverage capabilities of ASRI utility or GIS. So we um, not only exchanging data, but we also can call a feature service in um, uh, uh, GIS and say do some analysis and present results back in design. So I will, uh, it kind of adheres to the overall uh, uh, concept of how we build AUD. We provide an uh, environment for designers to work in one tool that uh, can uh, uh, reach out and get all the relevant data inside uh, the design tool. And we also uh, provide a connection manager. That's a new term, and I will show you exactly what it is. Um, but if you think about um, uh, uh, ArcGIS Pro uh, pl or uh, playback manager, so Paul presented there is a, we have a playback manager for GIS, but we also have a, a, a kind of a AUD updater, which looks and uh, does the same thing as a playback manager in AUD and in GIS. So we kind of evolved this concept. We're now providing certain tools that not only work in AUD, but also in uh, GIS as well and the mobile device. So it's really tools that uh, implement the same framework and it, you can run it in any environment. So it's quite exciting. I'll start, uh, so now we set the stage and I'm going to run demos. I'm uh, actually running a mini enterprise on, on my laptop and I have a ArcGIS Pro client, uh, have AUD with, uh, configure it for communication and I have, um, we have um, uh, ArcGIS Enterprise in the cloud. Um, so it's everything is connected and I'm prepared to run live demos. The connect, <laughs> local Wi-Fi connection is unstable, so I have uh, slides with pre-recorded segments, but uh, so we can see everything how it works. Uh, uh, but at any point in time, if you want to dive in or after this session you want to explore, um, uh, we can uh, really go into live uh, demo and see all the level of details. You have seen this diagram before, uh, probably a few times, and that's just like a typical out of the box uh, uh, intelligent design solution from SBS. You'll see um, uh, AUD in the center connected to a work management system, and on the right side is uh, GIS um, uh, environment, in this case represented by ESRI. ArcGIS Enterprise with the utility network and uh, with a design container, right? So the design container is uh, used to kind of exchange data between um, um, uh, consumers. And we see here uh, uh, different uh, users, in, any users in utility authorized to see data, uh, field maps and, and uh, uh, ArcGIS Pro. So uh, what we can do, I can actually show you uh, design container uh, live. So I'm, I'm clicking on design container and it shows me, uh, connects me to ArcGIS Enterprise uh, with um, a standard out of the box configuration of a dashboard. We have this digital container and this digital co um, uh, design container uh, allows us to basically click on a feature 
and it shows me all the design in the area so you can as an authorized user you can see all the designs and that's a, in this case I can see AUD communication design I can see features and all the details so this is um, a design container now let's look at the session um, in AUD using um, uh, configuration for communication so as um, I start AUD um, I'm connected to a uh, utility network, uh, two services, and I can actually um, see the network. I can use Utility Data Hub EIM to zoom to location of uh, my work. And um, because I'm connected to Utility Network feature services, I can uh, run trace actually within from within AUD. Uh, select um, uh, line representing uh, multiple uh, fiber cables. It shows me uh, different fiber cables in that location. Show, selected fiber shows the tube, and then I can pick and choose one specific fiber and execute trace um, on that fiber. And it runs a trace on GIS and shows results from within my AUD session. So that's a great way of uh, being inside um, AUD, but connected to feature services. We can run any analysis and bring in results, including trace or um, uh, there are additional uh, trace configurations. So with um, um, this uh, uh, AUD com solution, we added additional capabilities. So we remember our focus was on build, building digital twins and um, uh, we added connection to SBS utility content. Utility content is a site um, that uh, and maintained by SBS and provides access to different mo uh, models and parts. And if I select it, it will just show um, available parts. But what is important, and I will show it in detail, uh, that um, uh, utility content also provides configurators. So we can s provide certain parameters and uh, parts can be built uh, from the um, uh, from uh, uh, the uh, uh, pre preset logic, and then um, uh, at, we also connected to Autodesk Forge and Autodesk Docs. So there was a question how uh, AUD can uh, store data, and one of uh, option op way of. Uh, saving drawings and directly to the cloud at Utility Data Hub AM allows to store data in a, in a forge. And uh, we also have seen in the morning uh, GeoBeam, that's where it, once you uh, publish your communication design or electric design to um, the forge, it can be visualized with the GeoBeam technology. Uh, then we added uh, trace configuration I presented you. And what's more important, uh, we added connection manager. Connection manager is a tool in AUD that allows us to do that a granular level of connectivity within, within the tool. Um, and you can see connection manager running in uh, AUD and ArcGIS Pro along with the playback manager. And uh, we have a prototypes running on the mobile device. And also we leverage diagramming services. You know, in the fiber, it's important to build those diagrams, splicing fiber patch panel diagrams. Those can be built uh, with the uh, uh, services of utility network. Um, we started configuration and we selected, uh, the, this is a typical uh, uh, typical uh, kind of catalog. We've uh, um, looked at uh, um, the different parts and it, as you can see this, uh, uh, the example is uh, hub, and uh, hub and closure and it comes in a variety of different sizes. So uh, um, ba based um, on how you order equipment, you can order it with um, splice tray or without splice tray, with a couple of patch panels. Uh, and it also offers different sizing uh, uh, for equipment. So the challenge is how do we configure AUD for all this variety of different part, different equipments uh, that um, can be um, uh, used in design. And for that, we um, actually uh, utilize the uh, uh, configurator service from uh, utility content. Um, this is in AUD design. We have this uh, digital twins created uh, uh, 3D blocks for uh, uh, equipment and structures. 
um, and that basically help uh, to visualize uh, how things are constructed in the field. And um, if I want to create uh, multiple uh, configurations, I can connect to the service and provide, in this case, uh, configuration parameters, you have to provide uh, cabinet height, width, uh, depth, uh, whether it has supposed to have a door or a attached pad. And it generates a DWG, which is kind of assembly. Dave yesterday talked about uh, uh, providing assembly, so this is auto-generated uh, uh, with the cloud services. And uh, you can see it has all the level of details that we need uh, in this case at a cabinet enclosure with a pad mount and uh, two patch panels built in. And the important part is that now that we use those uh, uh, 3D objects in, uh, uh, in AUD for our design, we can share those models with um, a utility network in ArcGIS. ArcGIS will build topology, but then we can create a scene that uh, uses uh, uh, design and uh, objects created in design in a 3D so you can visualize your designs and actually manage, uh, now manage uh, data uh, in GIS using those 3D blocks. So what I'm trying to build here is a story of why we're looking at the digital twins and why we believe that will be relevant and, and very soon utilities will start looking at um, transitioning and in incorporating those 3D models in their asset management strategies, visualization strategies, so really all stakeholders can see your communication or electric design in, an, in a, the way that it actually looks like in a field. So that's the idea. And uh, the ch as you see, there, there is a challenge of uh, data uh, exchange and we uh, pr uh, utility data hub, the good news, provides a very flexible way of taking um, a presentation in uh, um, GIS, uh, whatever, well, that might be just a one single node with attributes and creating a complex 3D uh, presentation in uh, uh, AUD. And this is a great example. So we, um, for those who are not familiar with the uh, utility network, uh, specifically communication model, but it's also applicable for electric model, many features are modeled as non-spatial features, right? So they're modeled as a kind of relationship. And in, in a, if I look in, in a ArcGIS Pro, and select uh, uh, this uh, in the same enclosure that we looked at, it's half terminate enclosure, it's only one uh, location, it's one X, Y, Z and a symbol. The rest, um, it shows containment relationship and presents non-spatial objects. So it contains um, uh, communication junction objects, which is uh, a patch panel. Patch panel contains uh, ports and each port connected con con connector connectors. So all this hierarchy of objects uh, are really non-spatial. They're records in, uh, uh, in GIS. GIS use it to create a connected topology, but you just really don't see them. They are uh, logical elements in a, in, a, in a database. So what we've, uh, we have done, uh, we know in the design, we really like to see it. We want to touch things, right? So we want to connect things. So what we do, we uh, read information from utility network, non-spatial objects, and create those nice um, uh, the, uh, 3D representation, digital, digital twins of that equipment. And um, in the AUD, we completed matching of uh, data models. So in this case, this enclosure spatial feature is mapped to this box of enclosure, chassis mapped to uh, the patch panel, and we have these uh, ports that represent just non-spatial objects with the real features, real ports in AUD. So in a uh, utility network, in GIS, that's non-spatial objects. You can't see them. They are there on the, in relationships. But in design, you can really touch them. You can connect to them. So, and, and we do that through the translation between design and um, uh, uh, GIS. And that was really focus, uh, one of key um, implementation uh, enhancements we've done to enable that capability for communication domain. But I totally see that how the same approach would work with uh, um, 
uh, electric in electric domain because as I said in utility network electrical many features are also non-spatial like uh, connectors elbows and things are not are not represented special um, so that's uh, basically with the uh, set the stage and I'm just running uh, AUD and uh, for communication uh, in this case um, I hope you can see you will see once I zoom in um, there is a electric and uh, electric existing network. So because I'm a AUD, I'm connected to both electric and communication. I can uh, get data in, visualize them, and then I'm taking off from existing uh, communication line and uh, adding underbuilt telecom underbuilt to existing electrical uh, structures. And uh, it's just uh, simple, the same way you do it uh, in AUD, uh, you just indicate where the cable's supposed to be. And once you say accept, AUD runs the rules and uh, as per standards, will place uh, communication cable as underbuilt with a certain um, clearance of the circuits and uh, adds uh, framing uh, uh, and also does all the analysis. It recalculates, re-engineer electrical structures to see if this underbuild can be constructed, if any, all the reports created. So I'll, um, um, and it also creates additional guying if it's required. So it's typical AUD. You continue use AUD as you use today. It just allows you to now manage and work with um, electric, um, um, uh, with uh, uh, fiber uh, objects uh, or coax as well. Yes. Communication standards are provided by uh, owner of, of utility. So what we have done, we have selected uh, some um, um, base configuration was created based on RUS standard. It has a subject of uh, tele telecommunication. So that's what is currently configured. All right. Uh, there is no like well accepted international or even local, every utility. It's, a, it's another way of uh, clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so uh, this is a result. Uh, it's running and basically turned on in 3D. Uh, I can pause here for a second. It just, as you can see, uh, AUD uses st uh, standard-based um, approach of knowing uh, required clearance for fiber, uh, added uh, new fiber to existing electric network, added couple of guying to su support this, and um, uh, completed, of, of course, engineering analysis, bill of created bill of materials, so you kind of confident that uh, the result of your design adhere to standards, and you work with an electric team, or if it's external um, utility, you can send them reports or exchange information. Or my uh, underbuild uh, fiber, fiber the bill will not uh, change anything. And the same time, you see this um, underground. Um, uh, also construction done, and uh, we'll see all these digital twins in place. So design contains all the uh, relevant data, and it uh, has uh, uh, details that we want it to be in a communication design. So it's more uh, uh, all what uh, AUD does for electric, plus it has additional digital twins of equipment and connectors for uh, all um, uh, communication uh, uh, devices. And then uh, we're looking at um, internal uh, ISP uh, and uh, domain, and, and then uh, in this case, uh, what I uh, will do, because uh, uh, inside plant, we have to deal with the beam objects and most uh, using, for example, Revit, uh, models, we can uh, actually create and use those Revit models. In this case, Revit model sample is attached uh, to Navisworks. And um, now in the AutoCAD uh, map, and uh, it's out of the box capability, there is a coordination model attachment command. So you can attach uh, this uh, model, Revit model, as a coordination model in uh, to AUD. And it's, if it's georeferenced, it will be placed, or you can uh, manually place that that beam model inside your um, uh, AUD session. And uh, once it's placed, uh, uh, what you will do, you will start basically continue drafting. And uh, in this case, I would be drafting um, 
uh, uh, communication lines, but uh, uh, not, nothing stops you for doing it uh, with uh, electric, gas, or water. Utility will continue to use that same uh, ca capability. So uh, I'm inside AUD, but I have as a reference Revit model, and I can actually zoom in, I can walk into that Revit model and continue my cabling layout inside house or connect and snap. That's very important. You can really snap to that coordination model. Um, of course, we uh, uh, in for inside plan. It's important to have uh, all the uh, to see the level of details that we need. And in this case, we uh, uh, it shows uh, our uh, hub terminator with enclosures, and I can actually place my connectors. So, as designer, I I, I can use those models to to uh, actually uh, place and connect uh, features. In this case, I'm. Uh, I will use a patch cord and uh, connect uh, uh, a port uh, one from a patch panel into the another port on another patch panel, and and it creates a standard uh, capability. Um, and uh, but result is it uh, basically allows you to do graphically uh, do con connectivity. Um, uh, then um, uh, now uh, we have. Completed layout, right? So layout is done, and um, how you do it in AUD. Uh, now is, is a, a very important step. How do we connect? So we have layout of 12 uh, um, tubes, 24 fiber cable, and now we need to connect it to equipment, like do splicing or splice two cables together. How do you do it? Um, and for that, we've uh, actually introducing uh, a connection manager. Connection manager is a plugin to um, uh, AutoCAD, uh, AutoCAD map and AUD, uh, as AUD is, and it works with AUD. So I can select object that shows me this enclosure with a patch panel and terminated cables, and it has a two panes, left and right pane, where I can drag and drop uh, features uh, and to enable them connectivity. So I just select a patch panel and put it on the right pane, and it shows it has a front and the back side of a patch panel with all the ports. And on the left, I uh, selected fiber cable and put it on the left pane. Now I can see details, all the internals of those uh, devices and uh, fiber cable, and I can um, actually um, select a tube and splice it directly to all the ports on the back. You see it's now spliced. I just press button, connect, and then I can select individual fiber, uh, like service fiber here, uh, put it in uh, and connect to the front on the port one. So you see how easy it is. I'm uh, really with this tool. It allows us to quickly connect and uh, disconnect devices and fiber cables and do splicing. Right, and once uh, uh, this is done, it's saved as a, a transaction uh, that goes back to utility network. You can see all the changes done in, in design and it goes back to utility network uh, for really creating features and establishing connectivity and creating those non-spatial features, all these fibers, ports in utility network. All right. So we uh, also provide, uh, in order to complete the workflow, so we know that as building as a, uh, as a challenge, so we also provide connection manager for ArcGIS Pro. So now you not only have a, um, a playback manager, you also have a connection manager. And this connection manager uh, allows basically to, uh, it looks exactly the same as uh, uh, in, um, uh, AUD, so you, you can select a uh, feature on, on the map and it shows you can drag and drop uh, the device and fiber cable and connect, disconnect them. So that's uh, uh, the same uh, uh, tool. Uh, of course, it's compiled to different uh, environments and it uses the same framework, but it provides flexibility to designer to hand it over to mapper and mapper can adjust. So we provide tools for, to both uh, uh, designer and mapper. And this is a prototype of running on a mobile device. So uh, connection manager, it's again, that's a part of where you need to think about as building. If in the field I can connect, disconnect devices, how do I communicate back to the office? And finally, we um, 
uh, talking about building uh, fiber diagrams. I'm going to not to focus on this. Uh, uh, we are kind of running late in the session, uh, but I, I'll uh, encourage you to stop by and I will show you how we can generate all the variety of complex diagrams based on results on design um, and uh, generate those in ArcGIS Pro. You see, that's the kind of uh, interesting approach. We are not trying to build all the capabilities in AUD. Reason is, if that's already available in uh, your enterprise, why to build that service? I can connect to that service, a generate diagram, and uh, include in my construction package. Uh, and that's complementary. So now in the field, I have uh, diagrams and the 3D models. So now that's basically uh, very important to, to realize like uh, why we've invested time in creating those digital twins. The, the real goal and, and the final thought is uh, all that design information can be now leveraged in the field, in, in operations. Um, and they can use a different workflows, define different workflows of how to do construction and maintenance. So um, this is example of um, um, a, a panel that was generated. You remember we have a utility content site and we create, we can auto generate based on design specifications, uh, the shelves with the different equipment in it, and then uh, use augmented reality just to place and visualize it. And uh, that is everything is out of the box. We really have not customized or even attempted to create workflow. We just saying design provides data with those capabilities that can be leveraged in augmented reality uh, and you can visualize it and uh, take it to the field and or in central office location, stay on the floor and put that uh, shelf with the, all the details inside. Now that's another, th uh, uh, why, we, why we have done it, why we provide intelligent design. That's uh, another example, we have a vendor uh, uh, that now provides equipment with the barcode scan. As soon as I scan it, it connects to my design and it shows actually all the connection points uh, that were uh, uh, created in design, in AUD, and actually what each connection points is connected to. You see that uh, now I can go to 2G diagram trace it like visually and understand what the endpoint is, or if I'm in a modern uh, digital utility, I have a device that stand in front of the uh, uh, rack and if there's equipment and I can connect, uh, scan it and it shows me my uh, details of, of the design. Um, and uh, the next evolution of uh, how do we deliver to uh, custom uh, to const for con to construction. You see, uh, today we deliver construction sheets, right? So that's very detailed of how to put a trench, how to install equipment, and but it's all on 2G diagrams. What we believe and, and one of approaches we consider instead of providing construction sheets, can't we generate construction instructions? So as a construction worker with the proper equipment, um, I can actually see how to connect devices. So that's just, we use um, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, other, another vendor, so we just provide this as a reference. We have not prototyped this uh, internally, but um, uh, that same data can be used in workflows like this. So a design is available as instruction for field worker to connect things, right? Not to learn from diagram, diagram, but basically go to this that shelf, open that device, and connect this port. That's what we provide. Instead of drafting 2D diagrams, our design now is capable of provide instructions for end users. So that's twisted upside down, completely workflows. Do I need diagrams? No, because at the end of the day, I need instructions for construction through how to construct, not 2D diagrams. So you see that was a long story about digital twins, but the end game and a game of uh, leveraging those new technologies that may kind of change the way you think about workflows and uh, 
it, it can amaze, justify introduction of those models, uh, complex models, that's digital twins. So this one of use of that digital twins technology. And it's a part of AUD for communication. All right, any questions? I think we're at the end, yeah, question story. And by the way, if you're interested, you can go to uh, communications map story, and that just also gives you some additional details about uh, uh, what we do, how we have done it, and um, you can actually uh, listen to Dennis explaining uh, digital twin concepts, which is really very, that's where it started all our transformation and the tools for to support digital twins.